Till the tears run down from my eyes, Lord, somebody, ooh, somebody, can anybody find me? Somebody to love. Alexa, play hits from Queen. Okay. With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. This is No BS Job Search Advice Radio. Episode 1265, I think it is. 1264, one of those numbers. I'm Jeff Altman, the big game player, and welcome. I do shows daily every single day of the year, with few exceptions. Most of the time I do a show. And today's is about a cover letter mistake that someone made and whether, and they wonder whether it's going to be fatal to their candidacy. Hope you find this helpful. Hope you give it a great review. And I want to remind you that I don't do recruiting. I coach people and I help you throughout your job search in a variety of different ways, whether that's helping you make a decision once you get an offer helping you with your interviewing, critiquing resumes and LinkedIn profiles. There's a whole host of things that I do, but I don't do recruiting. So if you're interested in my help, listen to the end of the show. I've got more information there to help you. And with that, let's get going. So this is a question uh, I read from someone, and I think it's a useful question because it, it really speaks to the heart of mistakes sometimes people make with cover letters. So let me read it for you, if I may. They're asking, how fatal is this mistake? Last week, I sent out eight cover letters. And today I received, I realized instead of, quote, I am writing to apply, I wrote, I'm applying to write. How embarrassing. Would this be make or break for you? I haven't heard back from them yet, but it's only been a week, so I wasn't worried until now. So the question is, how fatal is this mistake? And as always, the answer is, it depends. You know, it depends on the nature of the job that's involved. It depends on whether anyone actually read your cover letter. Because, for example, if you sent this cover letter as an attachment, I can assure you no one's reading it. And it also depends on the nature of the role. You know, if you're applying for a writing job and you wrote that, you know, that could be fatal. But for most positions, no one really cares. You know, they might have just glossed over it. Because remember, people are reading resumes in six seconds and in cover letters, it's often less. If, if this was, you know, your typical innocuous cover letter sent as an attachment, number one, no one read it. If this was your typical innocuous cover letter put into the body of an email, someone might have skimmed it quickly to see if there was anything of relevance there. And if it was like most cover letters, there's nothing relevant there. Uh, and then gone to your resume. So frankly, I wouldn't worry about it. What seems more damning is that it's been a week since the application and no one's contacted you. Now you say only a week. If you're an experienced professional, that's pretty much the case of death. A week has gone by. And the likelihood is your resume was the bigger problem here, not your cover letter. See, if resumes don't make the case for a person's candidacy, you're not hearing from an employer. And all employers care about is that the resume vaguely fits that what uh, which they're looking for. So I'm less concerned about the cover letter. I'm more concerned that you haven't gotten a response. So you know, the likelihood is you're not going to hear from them and not having read your resume or the position description, I have no basis to judge why. They may have seen stronger individuals with tighter matches, uh, many different reasons, but I'll simply say, you know, for now, don't worry about that mistake. The likelihood is no one noticed. So that's today's show. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, here are a few ways to get even more from me. First of all, visit my website, www.thebiggamehunter.us. I have several thousand blog posts there that you can watch, listen to, or read to help you find your next job. If you want the best of my advice, join JobSearchCoachingHQ.com, where I've curated my information with a focus on interviewing. If you have a few questions, 
Contact me through the Magnify app for iOS. That's Magnify with an I at the end. Or PrestoExperts.com where you can call me. Schedule a specific time with me through chat on Magnify or by connecting with me on LinkedIn at LinkedIn.com forward slash IN forward slash The Big Game Hire. Once we're connected on LinkedIn, you can message me about coaching you, speaking with me about a resume or LinkedIn profile critique, help with a salary negotiation, my trusted advisor services, as well as scheduling me through for Magnify or for PrestoExperts.com. Like you, I don't work for free. You can also take my classes on Skillshare and become a premium member using the link in the show notes and receive two months for free instead of just the one that the site offers. Skillshare offers thousands of courses, not just simply mine. It is a great resource in a variety of different areas. Subscribe to my other podcast, which is called Job Search Radio. This one is number one in Apple Podcasts. Job Search Radio is number two. Subscribe to both. You will get great information seven days a week from this show, six days a week from the other. Lastly, I want to encourage you to join my group on Facebook called Career Angles. It's free to the first 500 people who join and is focused on helping you do better at work. Information is shared daily and we're building a supportive group there to provide advice and counsel during difficult times. Again, the group on Facebook is called Career Angles. I'll be back tomorrow with more. In the meantime, have a great day. Be great. (laughs) 